maybe my daughter and her age group downwards may not understand. But some of us that are still older, we still get that goest and don't do it. But, but I read Ecclesiastes 1, 2 to 11 again from New International Version. Verse 2. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. Verse 6. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north and round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. Verse 7. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ears is filled of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun, brethren, nothing. Nothing. I want to pause here. I deal in automobiles, and most times the vehicles that I deal with are in thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Some vehicles are up to $400,000. Some are half a million dollars. But I have realized that from year to year, there is nothing exceptionally new about a vehicle, brethren. In fact, me and my wife, we call it a piece of metal. Because I've realized that it is just mere transportation that a car does. There is nothing new under the sun. If you think that you have the latest model of a car, wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Hello. I've realized that there is no class of car that has value forever. Once you buy a car and drive it out of the dealership, it loses value that moment, immediately. So what is it about a brand new vehicle? If, after all, once I drive it out, it ceases to be brand new, in fact, what surprised me one time is that I bought a car for a client and the client changed his mind. Unfortunately, I had not always, I, I wanted to have said fortunately that actually I had not removed the car from the dealership. This was a vehicle that we had just purchased. The only thing that I had done is that I had paid for them. There were about six cars altogether, brand new vehicles. So I called the dealership because the client said he wanted a different model of car. So the next day I called the dealership and I said, please, I want to change the model of the car that I just bought. That since I have not yet collected it from you, can you just exchange it? Brethren, when I got the invoice, that car had lost $3,000 value. I had not removed it from the dealership. I called the client and I said, look, sorry, <laughs> the vehicle that you bought yesterday has lost $3,000 value because we bought it yesterday and I, if they have to return it back to stock, you need to lose $3,000 times six. That was $18,000, brethren. I just realized that there is nothing, there is nothing about all of the things that at times we run after. Hello? Because if that car will lose value even before it, it left the dealership, you know why they said it lost value? They said, sorry sir, for us to put this vehicle back to stock, it will appear under the name that I had bought it. So there is no way they are going to return it again as a brand new vehicle because it's already, you know, tagged under my name or under my company's name because I bought it. So brethren, what are we fusing about? 
There are people that are unhappy all day because a friend bought a new car. Brethren, that car is old already. It's a day old. It has lost value. I made up my mind that because of my experience in a dealership, that I will never, ever spend my money buying a brand new car. It doesn't make sense. See, why the vehicle I'm talking about lost $3,000 value was because it wasn't a very expensive car. It was about $27,000 or $32,000, actually. If it was a $100,000 car, the value would be $11,000 value for one day when you drive it out. So what is it? What is it that we are fusing about? Some people cannot sleep at night because their friend bought a new home. Oh, my husband, now he has to be six bedrooms. I know four restrooms and nothing less. If not, we are not going to sleep in this house. Where are you going to sleep? In the bush? <laughs> Brethren, there is nothing. There is nothing. Sincerely, there is nothing to this thing. Vanity upon vanity is all that is under the sun where we live here because there is no value to it. What counts is that Jesus Christ has saved our soul. That you have eternity with Christ is what has value. It doesn't lose value. Eternity is still eternity. If you check tomorrow, eternity is still eternity. So, why we should lose our peace, lose our joy because of things that does not matter. It's always bewilders me. May we have a better understanding after today in the name of Jesus. Verse 7. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full to the place where the stream is coming from. There they return again. All things are worrisome more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its feel of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. And there is nothing new under the sun. There's nothing. Verse 9, verse 10. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. No one remembers the former generation. Even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. This passage is a reflection on how everything on earth ultimately comes to nothing. The generations come and go, but nothing really changes. The earth remains just the same as it has ever was. The sun rises and sets just as it has ever been. The wind blows just as it has ever been. And the stream flows as just as it has ever been. And so on. There is nothing new under the sun. I ask you, brethren, this day, let your focus change in the name of Jesus. I want you to think about life more of what Christ has made it to be. The value that Jesus has given unto you. I discovered that yes, there is nothing new under the sun, but there is something new in Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in what? In Christ. He's what? He's a new creature. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hello. Brethren, everything is new in Jesus. Hello. You see, the new car that loses value does not match with what we are in Jesus or everything that is in Jesus. The Bible says that in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, he, in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It's in only in Christ that everything becomes new and actually remains new. It's only in Christ that the value 
of your eternity remains the value it is. It does not lose value after tomorrow. But in, on earth, everything we have here, these chairs, when we bought them, they were brand new. Yesterday, I was looking through them, Pastor, and I'm almost saying, I wish sure we're not going to change these chairs very soon. Because they are getting old. Have you looked at the carpet on the floor? You know, there is nothing that you buy that remains the same value. Your shoes, your clothes. You think you have the latest apple. Wait until next week. Yes. What is the latest game? What is the latest video game for our children? Check it. By next month, they will bring out another one. What is the latest television model that you have? What is the latest TV? I went yesterday, pastor, to buy TV for the pavilion, and I discovered that there are four models of t t television. Every week, almost every month, they are producing another type. You think you have the latest? Oh, watch out for next month. They're going to tweak it with one thing or the other. The production level, the quality level of our, t uh, of our telecommunication gadgets change every day. So you cannot boast that whatever you have today is the latest. You don't have the latest, trust me. And people are disturbed about this. Their lives are wearied over and over again because of things that do not have value that will change even in a moment. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. May we hold more to value the things that will live for eternity in the name of Jesus. Nearly everyone who has ever lived has been forgotten. Eventually, everyone, including the people who are alive today, will be forgotten as well. I don't care how you are celebrated as the biggest celebrity on earth, the, the most known celebrity. Have you noticed that even all the celebrities, one gaff alone, one gaff alone, the person becomes a non-celebrity tomorrow? Check their lives. Even check the lives of the so-called celebrity. There, there's no joy. There's no peace. Is that what you want to live for? I had an auntie uh, for blessed memory right now. She has passed on. She was very well to do. Very, very well to do. She had all that she needed. My auntie could beckon on any servant in the house. We had, the, we had a cook in the house. We had a steward. We had a driver. We had somebody who ironed her clothes, who opened the doors of her car. There was nothing we didn't have in the house. She was living like a queen. But she didn't have Christ. One day, thieves invaded the house, and normally she would lock her doors and close the doors downstairs. Pastor, that was the first time I knew there was a, a door that is completely metal, all to, from to, to handle everything. The frame is all metal, so you can't break through it. So my auntie had it downstairs, had it in her own room, but you know, Pastor, my own door was just wood. <laughs> if you kick it, if you kick the wood, it was going to open. So the door to my room was wood, and hers was metal. So that fateful night, thieves came and she had locked her door and whenever she's locking all you hear, back, 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 back. I said, oh my God. But when I close my door, pastor, I just push it and he closes and I, I go sleep. Thieves, when they come, they should carry me away. That's what she said. So when thieves came that day and then in the morning, I didn't know that thieves came. My auntie came to me and said, ah, Namdi, what's going on? Oh, you, do, you are sleeping all through the night. Oh, you didn't wake up. Thieves came here. I said, auntie, thieves came? <laughs> auntie, I didn't know that thieves came. I didn't know because I slept like a baby. I didn't even hear the noise of the thieves. But because she was so worried about so many things, she could not even sleep. That's why she knew that the thieves came. She didn't sleep in the night. 
But I asked her, Auntie, how come? Now, why are you worried? You have the metal door downstairs. You have the one by your room. You have by your window. He said, no, Auntie, just leave that. Leave that. <laughs> There's no peace. There's no peace. What do we gain? What do we gain if not for that Jesus had died on the cross for us to redeem us from the curse of the law, to redeem us from the hands of the enemy, to save our soul. Brethren, as we consider redemption this month, think about what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Next weekend is actually uh, Easter Sunday, and we're talking about the resurrected Christ. We're talking about Jesus who went on the cross of Calvary. He died and he was buried and he rose the third day so that he will save us from sin, deliver us from the curse of the law, give us freedom, deliver us from fear, give us joy, give us peace, give us all that you desire that does not rot, that does not go old. Peace does not go old. Joy does not grow old. It does not expire in the name of Jesus. That's what matters, brethren. That's what matters. This life is full of vanity upon vanity. Meaningless upon meaningless. If you check it closely. Honestly, I will be concluding even at this point. I plead with you I plead with you. And that's my message this morning. It's not too much. I, I told the Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to just stand here and speak. I want you to speak to your people. I want you to speak to every child of God in this auditorium and even those who are joining us virtually. That we make a difference this month. We make a difference in our relationship with Jesus. Maybe you've already given your life to Christ. But what is that relationship like? Have you really drawn close to the Lord? Is your life turned a new leaf? Are you still so consumed by the things of this life that does not matter, that does not have value, that is vanity upon vanity? Solomon the king said, it is vanity upon vanity. It does not count. Even after you've amassed all this, he had all the wealth, he had all the things that you can think of. But at the end of it, he said, it is vanity upon vanity. I read, I read the last portion of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I read Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. And that is the conclusion of the matter, brethren. Listen to this. Now, all things have been heard. Here, is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the duty of all mankind. Praise the Lord. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or bad. Brethren, I leave that word with you today. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the duty of all mankind. I want you to go with that message this morning. Think about your life. Make a difference from today. And decide that Jesus, I'm going to live a life that glorifies your name. Because that is what matters. Because this life is full of vanity. Everything will still be destroyed. There's nothing that doesn't get old. Even we, the human beings, we get old. <laughs> The things that I used to do, Pastor, it's not easy anymore. You climb the staircase, you do this. You, these days, when you climb, your leg will stop pain. You know, you're getting old. Brethren, let us rise and let us pray this morning. I want you to talk to God. Honestly, I didn't come here today so that I will give one sermon again. But I brought a message from the Lord to you. That the Lord is appealing to you as a child of God. That we will fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. And that is the only way that our life will make meaning. Meaning, even as we live. Can we pray? 
I want you to talk to God. Maybe you're here, first of all, and you have not given your life to Jesus. You have not made a commitment to the Lord. This is an opportunity for you to turn your life over to Christ. I, I want you to pray with me. If you're here and you have not given your life to Christ, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, please have mercy on me. Transform my life. Save my soul. Cleanse me from every form of unrighteousness. Cause me, O oh God, Father, from this day to walk in your ways, to live as your child, to be redeemed of your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. And cause me, O oh God, Jehovah, to run this race from now on till I meet you in the name of Jesus. If you pray that prayer today, Jesus has come into your heart. And brethren, all others, I want us to pray. I want us to say to the Lord, Lord God, help me. Help me, O oh God, Father, that your fear will ever be in my heart that lord i will keep your commandments lord i will walk in your ways i will do with that which matters lord god not about things the vanity upon vanity of things that dwell on earth that does not make any sense even to my living help me oh lord this day from this day onwards that lord god i will walk in your ways i will keep your commandments i will fear you mighty god in the name of jesus Help me, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.